Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with another Potential History video, this time the French, a tank meme. Um, I really have no idea what to expect here exactly, what's going to be so meme about the French tanks, because I don't know enough about the French tanks. <laughs> so let's go ahead and dive right in. History Films Inc. presents... Country Tank Meme Series. This is an interesting intro. We haven't seen this before. Meme, uh, <laughs> Director of the Germans. Produced by Jean Baptiste Eugène Estien and Maxime Huygen. Okay. So the typical subject I try to tackle with each country in this series is wartime production and design features grown out of each country's personal needs for their tanks. However, with France, they didn't really get to wartime production. Not to spoil it, but, well, yeah, that happened. They were defeated pretty early on in the, in, in the, in the game. They, they couldn't ramp up their production. So this video will be a bit different from the other ones in that I want to focus on a specific statement that I see made a lot that I don't really understand. Which is... The French army possesses more tanks, and they are of better quality than the German panzers. And as I was... I have heard this many times as well, and I have... Full transparency, I have said it, I think a few times throughout the history of this channel so far. He proves, proves that statement wrong. Well, then I'm going to have to be changing that statement for him for the future. Preparing for this video, I ran into this statement fairly often and couldn't shake the question of, is this really true? The French are really the inventors of the modern tank, coming up with the first one laid out like it's supposed to be during World War I and using it to carry them to victory. I mean, there was other stuff that helped too. Bit of an understatement. But the tank really changed the battlefield and the FT itself had a huge impact on its own, really starting a revolution around the world reflected by how everybody shamelessly copied it as soon as they yes. could and its further development, along with other tanks, were pursued after the war by France. However, World War I had a deep and long-lasting effect on France, with countless impacts and countless facets of their society. Yes. But the two important... Honestly, I would say that I think you could argue that World War I, World War I had more of an impact on France than World War II. Um, cause I feel like a lot of the way the French handled themselves after World War I continued after... I don't know, this is me. Fucking throwing shit out there. The ones for our topic today are manpower and money that greatly shaped French tank development in the interwar era. Yeah, France, the French French were broke on both of those. France was very happy with the FT's design and was more than happy to keep it around and probably kept it around longer than they should have. They do eventually move on. However, there were certain aspects of the FT that France simply couldn't shake. And it's very much reflected in the later designs that they eventually take into battle. France invests heavily in the two-man tank concept, creating multiple models of one-man turreted tanks, many of them sporting the same gun as the World War II FT. And this is seen as a rather curious drawback to a lot of people, especially knowing which direction tanks would go in the future with a greater division of labor between the crew members. There yeah. was a very specific thought by- Obviously, that, that, that includes, like, you know, obviously hindsight uh, is 2020. It, though. Firstly, with only two men per tank, you could field more tanks with less personnel. With the amount of men lost in the First World War and the subsequent lack of children born during the war years, this was helpful to bolster France's armored forces. Yes. When manpower was not exactly where they wanted it to be. Secondly, the tanks were overall smaller, not having to house a huge gun and a bunch of men, so they had a cheaper unit cost to the French government that wasn't necessarily in the greatest financial situation after the Great War and following Depression. Now, France wasn't Very good points, quite yes. as cash-strapped as is normally said, and as the years went on, the military budget... Lots of money for five-man tank. Grew, Two man. But it was still something they were very no, no, much no. paying attention to and would prefer over a larger, more expensive tank. And lastly, the French had a whole metric ton of ammunition for these guns, and really a lot of spare guns themselves left around from World War I. So it's very easy to produce them and fit them into these turrets. Or if you need to, you can just slap an FT turret onto a better hull and don't have to worry about... This is something considered and done on a few designs early on to save money, 
but not for too long. There was also a universal turret idea tossed around, but was later scrapped. The supply issues. And because of the great emphasis placed on infantry support for the vehicles, this amount of firepower was really deemed adequate. Now you may still be thinking that these reasons still don't justify leaving the tanks still lacking so much, but hey, I only promised you reasons. I yeah. didn't promise that they'd be airtight. <laughs> Just because there's logic <laughs> doesn't mean it's great logic. And I don't mean to characterize them as all bad. There were quite a few great innovations that the French undertook in their design, such as casted armor, the influence of which you can see in some of the war's greatest hits, such as the Sherman. And oleonematic <laughs> steering, hits. used on one of the tanks that broke the two-man crew rule, the Char B. So there was innovation. It wasn't completely two-man tanks with small guns. French doctrine of basically superior firepower. Real name, the Doctrine of the Methodical Battle. Did match the, the tanks fairly well to French strategy. Time. Both ideas were various degrees of flawed, but they did work well together for the intent and purpose that they both existed in. So the weak tanks did play to the weak doctrine, and this includes the often cited focus on infantry support, spreading the tanks out among the ranks. However, the French did concentrate their armor in the form of DLM and DCR divisions that were entirely armored and motorized units that varied between what branch they were a part of. So there was concentrated armor in the French army, semi-equivalent to a panzer division. And now that the understanding of how French tanks came to be, and in what ways they were used, is out of the way, this gets us back to our initial question. Were French tanks really better than the ones the Germans had? Around half the tanks that took part in the German invasion of France were Panzer I and IIs, very lightly armed and armored vehicles that also have single-man turrets. And in a one-to-one -one between a Panzer I and an S-35, the S-35 would clearly win. And this may be where the idea okay, comes from, nice. but German tactics made sure that these one-to-one -one situations didn't happen. Yeah. So in reality, the tank battles didn't look like this, they look like this. Well, we're bone. With the <laughs> <laughs> yes, again, all, the French failure was not really in their technology, is what I think he's pointing to, is what it seems like he's pointing to. Obviously, we're not done with the video yet, um, but as I think I've said before, is that the difference here was... It was a doctrin doctrinal issue between the Germans and the French. The French had good technology. They had a decent army, right? Of course, the standards had lacked since the end of World War I for, you know, anti-war support reasons and being broke and not having manpower. But also riding that wave of, hey, we won the last war. Let's just try and do this. Let's just replicate the same thing. Um, and so they had this doctrinal issue, whereas the Germans were innovating and had, well, relatively new uh, doctrine. They had new ideas, and they were going to use them. The Germans concentrating their armor in a spearhead whose numerical superiority would overwhelm and cut right through the French lines, tanks included. And even though half of the German tank force was made up of single-man turreted tanks, there is a very big difference between one-man turrets and one-man turrets, with the German single-man turrets having a lot better visibility and being a lot more comfortable in their layout. This only begins to tell half the story, though, because in the Panzer III and Panzer IV, along with, to a certain extent, in the 38 and 35 Ts, the Germans did an excellent job of making two- and three-man turrets so that the crew could specialize in specific tasks and do all their tasks more efficiently. So the commander was just commanding, the loader was just loading, and the gunner was just gunnery-ing. gunnery, -ing. gunnery, gunnery ring, ring, ring. Shooting. So each man could focus pew, pew. on a specific task and do it more quickly and more efficiently. But on top of all of this, the single biggest advantage that the German tanks had over their French counterparts was the use of radios. And this can't be understated. Radios were not universal in French tanks, although the more important designs tended to have them more often, such as the Char B. But when they did have a radio, it would very often have a very poor range. And along with this, more often than you would think, French commanders actually discouraged their use. They feared that the Germans would intercept communications or send false orders to cause chaos in the French ranks. And as a result, the French spent a lot of the campaign willfully using runners, signal flags, and hand signals instead of direct radio communication when it was possible. So even though this is a fairly unbelievable decision, it's another example of there being thought behind something, it's just not always sound thought.
But after you put all these things together, you can see how the Germans really won the tank contest. Now, normally in these that videos, I don't talk tinkling. about a completely different side as much as I have in this one. But I think such a deep comparison is really necessary to really understand the faults within. Although there was logic, it was very incorrect logic. And French design suffered quite a bit because It was more of... Let's... It, the French were essentially doing what they could do with the, like, right, it's, as he's saying, sound, there was sound logic behind the French decisions. I'm going to push back on what he is saying, though, a little bit. I mean, the French made these tanks kind of, it, it's in line with their doctrine, the way that they wanted to fight the war, which was they wanted to fight the war the same way that World War I was fought. And you can't, I, I just can't bring your, can't, I can't bring myself to knock them for it, right? Because, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, of course, um, the French and British pretty much won World War I because they were able to last, right? Germany cannot last in a sustained, drawn-out war, right? They don't have the natural resources to it. Meanwhile, France and England, uh, France and Britain, have the colonies overseas to sustain them. Germany didn't have that. Um, so really, French's, France's decisions here were based on trying to trap the Germans into a sustained conflict, uh, which yeah, they failed. But I cannot really blame them for taking on this tank design. Whereas the Germans, even with their own two-man tanks with single-man turrets, design and implement them in a much more sensible way. Johnny, and you can't say anything good about the Germans. The international conspiracy of historians said if you do, they won't send us the checks. Knock it off. So, were French tanks really better than the German ones? I would say no. And this is of course without looking at them alongside the British designs that were present. And you could maybe have an argument of the Allied force in general, British and French combined, being better than the Germans. But on a one-to-one -one France v Germany, I don't think it's much of a contest. I still don't think, though, you can 100% blame the French High Command for walking into a mistake. Yes, he's saying what I was saying now. The German system that was untested previously, except for that one time in China. <clears throat> and you can't really fault the French for wanting to go with something more safe that they felt was proven. But they do really miss the point here and wind up with a much less effective tank force full of problems that the Germans are really able to exploit. I don't want this to be misconstrued as my going with the stereotype that the French military didn't fight very hard and just surrendered, or that they were cowards, or any of the other stuff you see memes about. The French soldiers on the ground fought very bravely and very hard. And there are many examples of them fighting in ways that do not suggest that they were just planning to give up. Now, you could talk for literally as long as you wanted to about the real reasons France fell, and there have been more theses put forth by a million authors throughout the decades as to why it did, and that's not really within the scope of this video, so I'm not going to go much more into that. But it is 100% not because the French army just surrendered and gave up. The issue is not the fault of these guys, it's more the fault of these guys. Yep. Maybe let Maybe not these guys exactly. I mean, they could be nice and have had nothing to do with it, and to be honest, it's the best footage of the French government officials I could find, so it'll have to do. Um, let me see if I can recognize any of these French officials. Is that De Gaulle back there? That might be De Gaulle. I'm not too sure. None of these guys are Pétain. So I do not believe that this is the French government that surrendered. Because, yeah, I, I think I would recognize Pétain, Marshal Pétain's face out of a lineup. <laughs> So I don't think he's there. Less so him. And the whole meme really needs to end. Thank you to my patron. All right, that was the French tank meme. Uh, final thought here. Um, I'm going to disagree. Um, it seems... So if we look at the quality... He, he even said it in the video, though. Like, in a 1v1, the French tank would be superior to the German tank. Uh, it seems to be as an average. Uh, however, what... what made the difference and what made the German tanks, I guess, superior is the German doctrine, right? They would never go into a 1v1 against, like, they would never pit their tanks in 1v1 situations against a French tank, right? They avoided that. They used their doctrine, you know, to win. Um, so I think in that case, then, no, the, 
as always, when it comes to history stuff like this and arguments like this, you kind of have to, you know, give context and talk about all this surrounding information. Um, it seems that really, actually, in a 1v1 situation, French tank versus one German tank, the French tank would win. However, because of the way that the Germans fought this war, the Germans had the numeric superiority in how they organized their tanks, right? The French obviously sparsed out their tanks, they didn't really have tank cores like the Germans did, and they instead, like, uh, we saw this in um, Eastery's video that we recently watched um, on the Western Front. The French had their tanks kind of sparsed out also with support infantry. They didn't really have too many full on, full like tank brigades and whatnot, unlike the Germans, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, that was Potential History's French Tank Meet. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.